Sweeping the back-to-back -back against Los Angeles and Charlotte, the Dubs held a Hornet squad that since acquiring Grant Williams at the deadline had been 4-0 to a season fourth lowest among all teams in any game this season, 84 points. Brands and Pajemski locked up the Hornets on D, plus pods broke the ankles of a former EuroLeague MVP. Maple Jordan Andrew Wiggins was embracing the contact with force after getting downhill, finishing with the Warriors' second most 14 points on 78.8% true shooting. In a highly respectable lay everything out there old school defensive battle, the front court of Kaminga and Green produced eight stalks, meaning combined steals and blocks. Steph Curry received a rare, fair whistle from officials, as the superstar that never flops and conversely respects the game at all costs is, when it comes to not flopping, the greatest of all time, as you'll see exactly why later on in this video. I've never been a foul baiter or worried about selling calls. Adding a plot twist directly before the buzzer, a last second hold me back scrap broke out which involved former Celtic and Maverick Grant Williams. That dramatic beef along with everything you need to know schematically and have to stick around for in general about the Warriors is around the corner. Right before that just 10.4% of you watching at this very moment are subscribed according to YouTube's analytics so if you're not in that percentage trust me you're gonna want to subscribe. Thank you for doing so it would make my day and yours as well. Despite abysmally struggling to find a flow offensively and make Taking merely 13 of their 42 attempted deep range bombs, equating to merely 31% three point shooting, scratching and clawing defensively allowed the dubs to find a way to pull out a solid double digit victory versus a Charlotte squad that was on fire on their flight to San Francisco. In a 30 for 30 matchup between Steph and Seth Curry, this 23 24 Warriors composition showed you the dubs are very much capable of winning games in ugly fashion. This ability to win when the shots aren't falling displays a 2022-esque championship caliber grittiness from the Warriors. We see how this defensive engagement fueled by Draymond Green and Gary Payton II who displayed top-notch positioning and ground coverage directly set the Warriors up for buckets in the flow on the other end offensively. Firstly, during this Hornets pick and roll featuring Mitchich creating and Richard screening, Saric switches onto Mitchich, funnels him into the low man in green, who swats the layup, collects the board, and outlets to Kaminga. Kaminga pitches it back to the trailer in Peyton. Peyton's swing to green is followed by an incredible floater entry from Draymond over Seth Curry to Saric, and with Mitchich forced to overhelp when Seth hits the deck going for the interception, Saric then intelligently drops off a bouncer to the dunker spot, which locates GP2 to execute a contending caliber team-esque sequence that featured elite bits of unselfish extra passing and offensive rhythm. On this next play, watch the body angling, anticipation, timing, and high engagement level from the young glove. As Peyton II scopes out this lazy Bridges outlet from the jump before picking it off with a deflection, collecting the loose ball at his feet, Brock purdying it to Kaminga, who leaves a flashy scoop to the trailer in Curry, and Steph gets Bridges looking silly by baiting three to get Miles flying out, and then decisively get into his midi to complete another insane two-way sequence. The dubs were driven by the intensity of not just Draymond Green and Gary Payton II, who we'll get to more on later in this video, but just as importantly, rookie Brandon Pajemski. This mesmerizing Manu Ginobili Draymond Green hybrid gets attention for a reason, as the consistency, well roundedness, demeanor, and impulsive basketball intelligence from Pods are light years ahead of players his age. Shockingly, by a full 68 over the second ranked Kaminga, a bigger gap between the second ranked Kaminga and the sixth ranked on the dubs Peyton II in plus minus. Proving Branson was an all time draft robbery for rookie GM Mike Dunleavy, according to Stat Mamba, Pojemski has more games of recording 10 plus points, 5 plus rebounds, and 5 plus assists simultaneously than number 1 pick in 2023's draft Victor Wembanyama and number 2 pick in 2022's draft Chet Holmgren combined in their rookie season so far. That stat right there is actually ridiculous. Against the Hornets, 
Pods improved upon his league lead in charges drawn among all players despite it being just his first year, laying his body on the line fearlessly, then keeping his head up with elite neck strength to avoid smashing his head on the court. Remember, these guys don't play on a field, and a wooden court can have life-changing consequences. Credit to Pajemski for both knowing how to safely fall and risking his health by soldiering for his Golden State teammates. Pods would straight up snap the ankles of traded at the deadline from OKC to Charlotte Facilier Micic, sending the former EuroLeague MVP yet NBA role players stumbling to the floor before maintaining the poise to knock down the midi, kid something else. For key bench weapon in the high IQ GP2, since returning from a grade 2 strain of his hamstring, Gary Payton II seems to have been done right by Drew Yoder and the Warriors four-time championship winning training staff, because since returning from his injury, keeping the Payton legacy strong, the young glove has been a plus 23 over 5 games of action, but more notably in just 14 minutes on average, his 8 point per game average has been produced on a ridiculous 77% shooting from the field, 60% shooting from 3 point range, and 84.2% true shooting. On the topic of hot streaks since returning to action, this team's second most important player behind Stephen Curry, not to mention the defensive anchor, number 23 Draymond Green, has been money in all facets since getting back from his suspension. The aura from Dre is special right now, and the same thing can be said for his statistical output. Throughout 16 games of activation post-suspension, Green's been revitalized, leading the Warriors to an NBA 4th best 11-5 record over this span, while being the best defender on a team that ranks 5th in defensive rating among all 30 squads. If you missed the very end of this Warriors game against the Hornets though, after Miles Bridges tried to bully Lester Quinones, the Dominican wasn't about to be pushed around. Most unnecessary about this from Charlotte's standpoint though, was Grant Williams flying in as the so-called Batman acted more like Bane by jumping into the altercation out of nowhere and going after a much younger player than him in Leicester, getting right up into his face aggressively as hell. No wonder two top teams have gotten rid of him. To be fair, Grant's been playing better in Charlotte. Yes, it's time for the man to embrace the villain arc. But Draymond would be quoted post-game by Anthony Slater as saying regarding the former Celtic and Maverick Grant Williams, this tough guy act is going absolutely wrong for him. He's a nice guy, talking too much is kind of what got you out of Dallas. Pray for Grant Williams. For Draymond, he had every right to talk every bit of trash in this scenario, which quite frankly goes for anything in terms of the CEO of the Draymond Green show, given Green's the only A-list NBA talking head next to Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith, whose words are validated with NBA championship winning experience. Plus, against Grant Will and the Scrappy Hornets, Green was a game-high plus 18 and tallied a monster 13 rebounds. Not too shabby for any player, let alone a 33-year-old with hefty mileage under his belt, not to mention all while being on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. We've seen how the returns to the lineup recently for Golden State of Green and Peyton II have made the Warriors much more dangerous of a basketball team. This gives Dub Nation some hope that the soon-to-return future Hall of Famer Chris Paul, who was dunking in the pregame warm-ups against Charlotte, can make the Warriors even more of a threat upon his return and give everything he has poise and smartness-wise and attempt to win his first title, time will tell for CP. Moving on to Stephen Curry, who's playing the most ethical basketball of any NBA player, not just in today's game, but of all time. This month is seeing the chef break his own NBA record for the fewest free throws attempted per game by a 30 plus point per game score. This stat shows you the man never gets calls, as if you watch the games, he never flops for contact unethically. This should give him more respect from officials to call contact on him when it does occur naturally, but as you just saw, the numbers prove a ton of officials are allergic to Curry because he gets fouled more than this. Pay attention, Stripes. For the just turned 29 year old and already his fifth season living in the Bay Area, Andrew Wiggins made some crucial plays for the Dubs in the third frame. After Pojemski draws gravity with his post up and half drop step, give credit to the kid for seamlessly staying on balance before he spots the wide open Wiggs, whose stroke, even with Bridges closing out, is absolute cash. Wiggins for three, and he rattles it home. 
Very next possession for the Hornets, an inadvertent unforced error from Bridges, sees Wiggins then collect the fumble, dominantly push the pace with a couple pushaheads, sell a former EuroLeague MVP on a drive by entering his two steps, and just as Mitchic latches onto him, Andrew immediately finds Kenyones for the nifty drop-off pass and its buckets. The night before, against the LeBronless Los Angeles team, Curry dropped 32 points and 8 dimes, one assist of which was generated by this accurately high-octane inverted no-look behind-the-back facilitation. Even when stationary, let alone in the flow of an NBA game, and directly after receiving a bullet pass like the one he got from Draymond, not to mention through multiple defenders, this pass is incredibly tough to make. One of the toughest dimes indeed from any player this season, courtesy of the Bay Area's finest. Shifting to the extension for Stephen Douglas Kerr that's astonishingly made him the highest paid coach in NBA history. Congratulations, Kerr. As criticized as Steve's been by a chunk of Dub Nation while then being admired by the other portion of Warrior fans, the truth is this extension should have happened a long time ago. Dunleavy not extending Kerr last summer was a massive mistake because before being extended, it really wasn't in Steve's best interest to be developing any of the Warriors' young talent. Given Kerr was in a contract year, he was likely contemplating to himself that he could very well be a coach of another team in 2024-25 and be competing against some of the Warriors' talent. This explains why Kaminga wasn't being played earlier in the season and the previous short lease Jackson Davis was on. However, after being extended, Kerr's player development can now be unlocked given the man in charge knows his future. The fact that TJD got 15 minutes the game after Kerr's extension proves that last point of mine. But in general, Steve's mind should be much more clear with this extension, and I'm looking forward to seeing him flourish with his elite playbook and leadership. Substitution-wise, Kerr's gotta stay focused, but I digress. On another note, Strictly by the eye test, I don't know about you, but I've noticed much better movement, conditioning, and therefore effort level as of late from Kavon Looney. After struggling with his stamina early in the year, the center's beastly ability to keep possessions alive, defend giants on the block, and scrap for everything he gets around the bucket like a man possessed has again made Loon Dog look like he has that dog in him. This loon dog revitalization gives TJD internal competition, but as much as I've been a trace stand preaching for him to get minutes in about all of my warrior vids, this comp should help Jackson Davis provide the utmost amount of hustle to earn his spot in the rotation. At times, Trace can lose his edge in terms of hustle, so let's see TJD prepare like his best self and dominate to earn as many minutes as possible. Trace has got to be quick to thrive, but for Jackson Davis, his 17 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 blocks against the Lakers improve the Warriors record when he scores 10 plus points and snags 5 plus boards to 7 wins and 4 losses. From a superstar perspective, Stephen Curry's name has become the new Kobe in terms of what you say when throwing garbage from distance into the trash slash taking wild jumpers. Take Curry's rival on the number one seeded Minnesota Timberwolves in Anthony Edwards as an example. If there was ever a way to increase your marketability, Ant just did it right there. Going back to Steve's lucrative extension though, and I wanna know what your thoughts on this move are down below. Best answer gets next video's commenter shout out. Today's commenter shout out I'm giving to a Sin Harris, who says Jason Tatum's MVP chances should be number one. He's the best player on the best team in the league. Appreciate every answer. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.